Hey, this is Jesse with Create This, back with another solar generator video. I've been working on, I guess you would call this version three of my solar generator for a few months now, and it's almost complete. So quick overview of what I've got here. This is a Midnight Classic 150 charge controller. The faceplate is separate. It's connected via data cable to the unit. This is a Victron BMV 700 state of charge meter. I've got a Xantrex SW2000 pure sine wave inverter down here in the bottom of the, uh, the case. And this is the remote on off switch for that. And then this is the, I've wired a plug from, from the front of the inverter up to the face panel here so that you can get your power right on the face panel. I've got two, this is a 12 volt system and I've got two 12 volt battery terminal posts. These are three eighths inch posts. These are full power, full amperage. So whatever I can get out of the battery, we'll go through that. I've got a 150 amp breaker on the entire system. I've got a 220 amp low voltage disconnect down inside the case. It's a, it's also a Victron unit. It's a BP220. Battery protect is what that stands for. Whatever will go through this 150 amp breaker will, will power these, uh, these two posts here. I don't have everything up here plugged in right now. This is the solar input. I don't have it labeled. It goes to the Midnight Classic charge controller. These two breakers, these are 60 amp breakers are for the Midnight Classic, but I don't have them attached right now. Um, I've also got a 75 amp Anderson connector battery output, 12 volt DC. And uh, again, I've got a 50 amp breaker for that, but, but neither one of these are attached currently. And then I've got 45 amp Anderson connectors with 30 amp breakers, and those obviously aren't connected yet either. But the solar input is connected to the uh, Midnight Classic 150, and the inverter is actually functional. All of this is designed to fit snugly inside a Pelican 350 cube case. This is the cube case. I've taken the foam out and it does indeed fit inside there. The whole unit is kind of heavy. I, I'm not sure exactly how much it weighs, but it's heavy enough that I don't feel comfortable lifting it up myself. My son and I working together can lift it. So what I do is I use, a, uh, I use an engine crane to lower it down in there. I, I just recently bought an engine crane for that purpose. But um, the cube case here is on wheels. So it is a portable solar generator in the sense that you can roll it around, uh, but it is very heavy indeed. Uh, interestingly enough, this solar generator that I'm making is more or less the equivalent of a Yamaha EF2000IS, which is what you see right here. The Yamaha is quite a bit smaller. It's maybe two and a half times smaller than the uh, solar generator but the solar generator can actually output a little bit more power, I think. So it's kind of a toss up as to, you know, they're, they're fairly equivalent, like they're in the same, the same weight class, I'd say. All right, so back to the faceplate here, uh, turning on the inverter. We see the Midnight Classic begin to boot up. I almost panicked there for a second. That took a little longer than I expected. <laughs> So there's the Midnight Classic uh, booted up. If we had some solar input going on, you would, you would see it registered here. The Victron is always on. So you can see the voltage display there, um, how many watts are being drawn. The Midnight Classic draws about five watts continuous. I've got about 74% charge right now, if you believe it. I'm not sure I believe it. And given a five watt load, it says that, you know, this is, this is the runtime in hours. So it's saying like 124 hours, but I think, it's, I think it's adjusting its calculation as we speak. So I think this will settle out at about 50 to 70 hours, something like that. And that's if you, know, you have the Midnight Classic on, but you don't have any solar input coming in. The, uh, the battery is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour LIFEPO4 battery. It's a GBS version. All of the primary wiring to the inverter is a 4 aught cable on the inside. So very beefy stuff. When we turn on the inverter here, you can see that that just easily comes right on. And if we attach a small load, like say a drill, for example, we can see that it powers right up and we can watch the, the wattage. Got up to 300 watts there. With the inverter on and the Midnight Classic on, you tend to see about a 10 watt draw. So you can see when I turn off the inverter, 
There's a five watt draw from the Midnight Classic. Turn on the inverter, you get nine or 10 watts drawn. So the Xantrex SW2000 inverter appears to draw about five watts standby, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, it just kind of depends. Okay, so on the bench here, I have a Frigidaire FFRE0833S1. It is an 8,000 BTU, 12 sear unit, so it's fairly efficient. Not the the most efficient thing in the world, but fairly efficient. It takes a moment for the compressor to kick in, so I have some time to talk. Currently, it is drawing 119 watts. That is just the fan unit inside. The compressor has not turned on yet. I have a remote control. It is 77 degrees down here currently in the basement, and the set point is 71 degrees. It will kick on in a minute, and I will show you that it does indeed run. Voltage of the uh, system is 13.17 volts currently with a 118 watt load. I'll read out the voltage later when the compressor's on. All right, there we go, compressor is on. Starts up just fine, no problems. We're pulling about 523 watts, 516 watts right now. And the voltage has dropped down to 13 volts. 540 watts, and it'll, it'll ramp up. I've seen it get as high as 800 watts, I think down in Florida. We're down to 12.98 volts at that range. So I can actually run this air conditioner off of my Yamaha EF2000 IS. I did that down in Florida. It works fine. It's, it's kind of interesting seeing an air conditioner run off of a solar generator. So if you had an equivalent of six or 700 watts of solar input, you know, you'd probably need 800 watts of, of panels or, or a little bit more to do that. If you had that much, you could, you could effectively run this air conditioner indefinitely, during the day anyway. You'd be able to run it during the day ind indefinitely. It's pretty awesome. And again, this is all being driven off of the, the Xantrex SW2000 inverter. My runtime, according to the Victron, for this unit on battery power is about half an hour. Uh, and again, I'm only charged up to about 70% right now, but I'd say that's, that's probably pretty accurate. It might even cut out a little bit before a half an hour. 586 watts, and we're pulling 45.7 amps from the system. I'll turn that off. It is blowing cold as well. It's nice. All right, this is a 1,000 watt microwave. I have a cup of water in there. Uh, on the back panel, it says that it's rated for 1,450 watts. I suspect that this will not run, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute, but let's, let's, try, uh, let's fire it up and see what happens here. Put it on for a minute. Holy crap, there it goes. And that is drawing 1.85 kilowatts. Wow, that's impressive. 1.85 kilowatts. My voltage is down to 12.53 volts, and I have a half hour runtime, but it's going down. It, it takes it a minute to adjust. And it is drawing 145.4 amps, 146 amps. That is impressive. That's, that's almost enough to trip my thermal breaker, my thermal 150 amp breaker up here. 1.8 kilowatts. That is impressive. There we go. See if my water's hot. Yes, it is. I can feel the hot, the, the cup is hot. All right. Okay, just for posterity here, the model number of this microwave is, it's a Hamilton Beach HB-P130-AL5-ALS3, uh, I believe. Um, I think I picked it up at Walmart or something. So it doesn't have the amperage rated on the back, which is interesting. Most, most devices have the amperage. It has the wattage, and the wattage is listed as 1450 at 120 volts. Uh, the way that works to figure out the amperage is 1450 divided by 120 equals roughly 12, 12.08 amps. So um, that may be the heaviest hitting device that I've run on the inverter so far. I was actually expecting that to fail. Uh, and the reason why is because of something called inrush current. So when a device, when an, when an AC device or, or any device really starts up and it has a motor inside uh, or large induction coils or something like that, what happens is there's a spike, a very high spike of current 
uh, just when it starts up, and it only lasts a second to like five seconds, somewhere somewhere in there, one one to three seconds, maybe five seconds. Um, and the inrush current for a device, especially for an induction motor, can be anywhere from two times to like 11 times the rated running current. This inverter, again, it's a Xantrex SW2000, is rated for 1,800 watts continuous, and we saw that we were pulling uh, 1.8, I think it said 1.8 kilowatts, right? So we were, we were right at the limit of the inverter. The surge power on this inverter is 3,000 watts. I don't see how long it's rated for 3,000 watts. It might be 30 seconds, it might be five seconds. It's probably something like five seconds, right? Why don't we go ahead and measure the inrush current on this microwave because I am fascinated. Uh, I've been doing this all week with various devices because some things that I expected to run will not run and I'll get into that more in a minute. But to measure inrush current, I built this little device and it is just a male plug and a female plug connected by Romex with the outer wiring stripped away. So this is uh, the ground wire. This is the hot wire, and this is the neutral wire. So what I'm going to do is I have a Fluke, uh, I just bought this, it's a Fluke 376 F, uh, FC, and this is a Bluetooth enabled, I believe it's Bluetooth, it's a Bluetooth enabled clamp meter, it goes up to a thousand amps, so way more than we need here. What we're going to do is we're going to plug the cable in right here. All right, and we are going to put the clamp meter on the amp setting, and we're going to press the inrush button. And this will allow us to easily measure the inrush current. And then we're going to set this, well, let me, let me put a load back in there. Take my water, put it back in the microwave. And we're only going to set it for 15 seconds this time, because I don't need it to be very long. So we'll set this to... 15, uh, 11, that's fine. And we'll start it up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're reading 7.8 amps in rush. Let's see what it says normal. Normal is 14.5. So the in rush current for the microwave is actually lower than the running current. That's interesting. I was not expecting that at all. All right, so that's all well and good, but uh, Jesse, stop the congratulatory parade and tell us something real. What won't this inverter run? You're absolutely right. One of the most interesting things that I found and disappointing is that it won't run my table saw. So my table saw is actually rated at a lower wattage than the microwave was. Actually, no, it's not. It's rated for 15, uh, 1,560 watts. So just slightly higher than the microwave. And well within the wattage rating of the inverter, I might add. The, the continuous rating of the inverter is 1,800 watts. So I was expecting to be able to run my table saw, but as it turns out, I cannot. All right, so the inverter is energized, and let's try to fire this thing up. So you can see the, the motor spins a little bit, but uh, it stops ultimately. And we see the error code E10 on the back of the inverter. And we have to shut off the inverter and turn it back on to clear that error. If we want, I'll just leave it off for now. So what's happening there? The rating for the table saw, it's a 13 amp table saw, so it should only pull 1,560 watt, uh, watts, 1,560 watts. So why can an 1,800 watt inverter not handle that load? And the answer, again, is inrush current. So let's go ahead, take our clamp meter and our adapter, and let's measure the inrush current for this motor. This is an induction motor. Um, some, some table saws, I believe, use a universal motor, which is a, it's actually a DC AC motor. It'll run either one, but induction motors are AC only. And uh, they're great for table saws, but they're bad for inverters. They, they have a very high starting amperage. So let's go ahead and turn the inverter on. There we go. Turn it over to amps. We'll hit the inrush button here. Okay, and we'll start it up. Okay, and I'm actually only reading 21 amps of inrush current. I get it now, I see what I did. Okay, so I'm reading 20.7 amps inrush, and I'll, I'll just 
put this up here so you can see it. There you go. There's 20.7 amps in rush. I'm sure you can see that. Okay. I earlier did a test on this thing on household AC power and the inrush current that it required to successfully start was much higher. And I was confused as to why I wasn't seeing that on this, but of course I'm on an inverter. So the most that this inverter can supply is 20.7 amps, which uh, doing the math, I don't know, it comes out to like, comes out to like 2,400 watts, right? The table saw by itself normally takes 77 amps to start on household AC. Now, I can prove that to you by actually plugging it into household AC. I have a very long, heavy duty extension cord here. Okay, so now I've got it on inrush. I've got it plugged into household AC. Let's see what it takes to start up. There you go. So 75.4 amps to start up in rush off of household AC. So you can see this inverter is nowhere near capable of supplying the surge current required to start this motor. All right. So in closing here, uh, I went through my shop and I took a look at all of the equipment, power tools and such that I have. And I made this little spreadsheet of what my SW2000 inverter, uh, Xantrex SW2000 inverter can run and what it can't run. So I've got a little legend up here at the top. Yes is can run. Yellow is it runs, but it makes a funny noise on startup. So probably you're gonna, you're gonna blow out the startup windings if you continue using it. Um, and no is it, it doesn't even start up. So of the items that do run, some of these are a little surprising. Uh, my Porter Cable Bench Grinder starts up just fine. It's a very low running wattage of five amps. My Hamilton Beach uh, 1000 watt microwave, again, very interesting. Uh, runs just fine, no problems. Interestingly enough, this will probably not run on the Yamaha um, EF2000IS generator because that is rated for 1500 watts. And we showed that even though this thing is rated for 1450 watts, it's actually pulling 1.8 kilowatts from the inverter. So, but it actually has a, a lower startup current than I thought, actually lower than, than the running current. The Harbor Freight horizontal vertical bandsaw, item number 93762. You might have seen this in the video where I uh, crimped one end onto a 4 aught cable and then cut the uh, crimp in half to see what the inside looks like. That's the same bandsaw. And that's rated at seven amps and um, it actually pulls 14.3 on startup and it runs just fine. My rigid shop vac runs fine. And, and so by the way, does my household vacuum cleaner. Both of those work great. The rigid shop vac is rated at 11 amps or 1300 watts. It actually pulls 30.5 amps or 3,600 watts on startup, which is really towing the line on the inverter. So it seems to start fine, but it's right on the limit, right? All of these things do not run. So my M-Glow four gallon uh, heavy duty compressor does not work. My Harbor Freight 13 amp worm drive frame saw does not work. My DeWalt DW735X planer does not work. My dust collector doesn't work. My production drill press doesn't work and my table saw uh, also doesn't work. So if you want to run a woodworking shop on solar, it's not going to happen with this inverter. Now there are options for getting more power, but you're pretty much, you're at least going to double the cost of the system. You're probably going to triple it. Kind of interesting stuff. I, I, thought, I thought that this inverter would run just about anything that I had that would run off of a regular 15 amp household AC socket. Turns out that's not the case. It does run some very surprising stuff like the 1000 watt microwave, but it won't run all of my power tools. This is Jesse with Create This. I hope you found this video interesting or useful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. It should be down here below the video on the right. Uh, if you hated it, hit the dislike button. Let me know why in the comments down below. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. I usually respond pretty quickly. Down in the description, down below the video, there will be links to the SW2000 inverter, probably the Yamaha EF2000IS inverter and, or uh, generator, and uh, probably a few other things. So if you saw something in this video and you're curious where I got it or how much it cost, 
uh, take a look at the description down below. These links are affiliate links, so if you click on them uh, and you buy something, I do get a small cut, but it just helps me support the channel and continue making awesome videos like this. So anyway, thanks for watching and please subscribe.